My name is Julian Cribb. Um, I'm an Australian science writer. Um, I've been a journalist and a newspaper editor for most of my life, and I've been writing about science for nearly 50 years now, uh, mainly about agriculture, but also about a lot of other aspects of science. And, you know, about 20 years ago, I started to meet scientists who were very depressed, a lot of scientists, particularly climate scientists and so on, because every day they went to work and they got the data in that they, whatever they were looking at, whether they were looking at wild animals, whether they were looking at climate, whether they were looking at uh, poisons in the environment, whatever, it was all getting worse. I came to understand that we are not just faced with one crisis. We are, in fact, faced by 10, 10 crises which are all coming together at the same time. So climate is just one of the 10. You know, nuclear weapons are one of the 10. Food scarcity is one of the 10. Water scarcity is one of the 10 and so on. But they're all coming together at the same time. And if you want to fix them, if you want to end those problems, you have to fix them all together. And you have to fix them in ways that don't make any of them worse. I'm a grandpa. That's my profession. <laughs> Nowadays, I've got grandkids. I would like my grandkids to survive. I am fearful they will not survive, right? Even in Australia, which is a long way from anywhere, there is a huge risk. These 10 threats we've been talking about constitute the greatest existential crisis that human beings have ever faced. That's in the last million and a half years. It's the biggest threat altogether. And if we don't fix it, then an awful lot of people are going to die and there will be a collapse of civilization. So it's urgent that we actually address these issues. You know, it, it's not small things that we're playing for now. It's not nations or empires or, or uh, stuff like that. It is the survival of the human species and the survival of our civilization and our economy and all the things that go with it. Uh, and you're quite correct. These, these threats are very large very complex, and not many people understand them. I mean, you people are the first, to, uh, there are not very, very many who actually grasp the, this big picture. But the main thing is that we must spread this message worldwide, that we must now all stand together. This is not a matter of nations. Nations uh, are finished, as far as I'm concerned. They've had it. You know, there's no point to nations any longer. They, they were useful 100 years ago. Now they are deadly, right, because nations only make war, they, they make war constantly. Um, they, the only people who have nuclear weapons are nations. So, you know, nationalism is a thing of the past. It has got to be a thing of the past. We have to understand we're one people on one planet and it's up to us together to solve these problems. The climate is going to become tougher and tougher for agriculture. Now, agriculture arose seven, 9,000 years ago when the Earth's climate entered a very stable phase. We're now out of that stable phase and we're heating up dramatically. So we've, we've lost the stability of the Holocene period in which human society arose. We only have cities because we have farmers who can grow the food for cities. Otherwise, we'd all still be hunter-gatherers, you know. So, so cities depend upon farmers. But if farmers go out of business, then so do cities. So this is, this is the critical issue. The world is running out of water. There is a water crisis right now. You need water to produce about 40% of the world's food on irrigation. You know, all of these things are, are, are becoming absolutely critical. Everywhere where we, we take water from the ground and use it to grow food, the water is running out. So this is a crisis we really need to get, get onto quickly before it uh, affects the, the global food supply. The other one is that we're, we're running out of soil, okay? I mean, we're, there's something like 75 billion tonnes of topsoil lost off the world's farms every single year. You cannot use it to grow crops and food. You've lost half the world's farms, farmland at the same time as you're time, trying to double the food supply to feed everybody. So you put all these three things together, loss of soil, loss of water, and an erratic, unpredictable climate that is going haywire. And you have a situation where agriculture just doesn't work any longer. So we have to find a new way to grow enough food 
to feed 11 billion people. And people are starting to do this. So you're seeing people farming on the tops of buildings and on the sides of buildings and things like that, um, where we're starting to cultivate alternatives to agriculturally produced food. We're making food out of all kinds of things that don't involve soil and water and can be grown in a, in a controlled climate in, inside a big building instead of being out in the, in, the, in, the, in the field under the sun and the rain. What is it that drives our over-exploitation of the planet? Short answer, it's money. Is money real? No, it's not. It exists only in here. Money is a figment of the human imagination. So at the moment, we're inventing more of this imaginary commodity money and we're using it to cut down forests, to clear land, to make more chemicals, to create more atomic bombs. I don't know what we're using it for, all sorts of stupid things. But basically, the problem is we have an infinite amount of money, as much as we like, on a finite planet. And that means you are going to run out of planet long before you run out of money. And bless you for what you're doing. You're doing wonderful work. And, and I'm inspired by what you're doing. So good on you.